Hey everybody, it's Steve, and I'm back to make another video about Splinterlands, and this one's going to be kind of fun, and I'm going to be going over some changes I'm making to some of my accounts. Now, I know I missed my recap about the town hall, and if you're in my Telegram, you would laugh at me, because I made that video, but I didn't hit record. I hit start streaming, and my streaming is set up for Splinterlands TV, but it doesn't go live if you're a... Uh, if you, unless it's your time so I streamed like my little recap and then I haven't remade it if you guys really want it super late I can make it tomorrow just though for those that like the recap it'll just be right before we're about to have another town hall so my feeling right now is that the next one will just be a double but today we're going to do something kind of fun and we're going to be opening up 400 chaos legion packs that's because I told you guys about the fact that I was going to be moving my Drazius account and my Robinson account over into the Splintermate bot service. The reason I'm doing this is because playing as many this many accounts, it's just taking up too much time. I've been doing it up until today. This is one of the reasons why I haven't been making as much content, haven't been checking as many games, haven't been, you know, researching as many projects. And so I realized, you know what, I'm spending too much time playing because they've made it so darn rewarding to play, but I'm going to take another av avenue here. So what I did was I moved over all their beta cards that were level six and seven to the splinter uh, mate uh, are the splinter golem rental service to start renting those cards out to people and then i have a lot that big bulk amount of chaos packs that i was waiting to open until after some of the legendary summoners came out we have at least one that has come out so i'm going to go ahead and open 400 of those i'm going to take those 400 cards and i'm going to try to turn those into account uh a chaos legion accounts that these ones can use with the botting service this will be similar to the bot that i've been testing out here that has mostly the newer cards at level two i'll be aiming to get these ones into the level three range but this video is really just going to be talking about um the uh, well opening up the packs seeing what we get see where we're at and then talking a little bit about some more of the tools that they have with the splinter mate service to help you make your accounts now again the splinter mate service unlike the arc mage service is only one dollar per account per month so it is a much cheaper service to get into and use in the immediate. But then again, the Archmage tokens right now, if you get one, that's all you pay to use it. But they did announce today that there is going to be a fee structure in the future. So we'll have to see what their fee structure is. Now, all of these services have to charge in order to keep running. And really, this one is designed a little bit more for investors. I even have to admit that the Splintermate service could be seen as a downside for some people. The reason why I counter that is because they have changed the botting game. All the botters have to buy cards. All the botters have to rent cards. And all the botters eventually will have to buy and stake SPS to their accounts or have staked SPS to the account. Why am I going to be able to run three accounts on this service? Because I'm about to open 400 packs and I'm going to combine those cards into hopefully around level 3 or level 4 chaos legion accounts for these two accounts and now i'm going to spend some additional money i'm going to be buying some additional cards and i've also filled up this account with all level two cards so all i'm doing is buying cards off the ecosystem putting them into accounts and then getting a bot to play them for me because i don't have the time to dedicate to playing all of them now there are some different kind of services out there and some different things you could be doing with the cards but i'm really trying some experiments at least for a while to see if i can't optimize the earning of my cards by moving my older cards into the rental service by moving my extra accounts into the splinter mate botting service and a submit and then trying out the arc mage uh, bot on my main account and hint it does seem like it might make it into champion and three faster than me that's the first test i have for it in a new season it usually takes me around seven days to get into champion three give or take an extra day or two depending on how much i play and how good i do the bot already two days into the season is like a few rating points away from champion three but it has had some up and down momentum so we'll have to see how that one works out and there will be a video coming up pretty soon on the arc mage service in more detail i'm just looking to learn a little bit more but today we're going to be opening up some packs and then maybe talking a little bit more about the Splinter Mate bot service. 
Okay, so let's get in here. As you can see, I got my 2,000 potions, so I'm ready here to open 200 packs. And we'll see, you know, let me just make sure I did my math right, right? Don't want to run out of potions. So if we do 400 pack, wait, yeah, times five cards in a pack, that is 2,000 cards. So my math was correct. I have just over 2,000 of each of the potions. We'll be opening them in 200 packs at a time. We're really hoping to pull some gold foil legendaries that actually I might think about selling depending on their value, but only because I'd be putting those the money from those sales into other cards. Otherwise, I would not be selling cards at this price level for the most part. Then again, I'll probably just hold on to them because the prices are cheap enough to where I think I'd rather hold on to any if I'm lucky enough to get any more then go ahead and sell them. I do have a few gold foil legendaries. I actually keep them on the rental golem account so they can be rented out for people who need power or want to use them because I play with my regular maxed out chaos set. All right, let's get into here. We're gonna do an open multiple. We've got the 200 on there and we'll do the first 200. This is uh, kind of fun, kind of nervous, right? What are you gonna get at this point? Um, we're getting near, we're in the last 10 days before the end of the airdrop and that comes to an end. And so we don't know what's gonna happen as far as pack values. Are they gonna plummet even more? Uh, so you could say that there was an opportunity to sell these and go ahead and try to rebuy after people can't get airdrops point for them. There's also a chance that people are gonna be opening up a lot more packs. We don't really know for sure. I do know that the, there's a lot of changes coming into this ecosystem and hopefully eventually some of them will start to push this stuff up. I'm gonna go ahead and click through these. I know it'll make the video a little bit longer, but it's a little just, it's funner. We got a couple gold cards. Those ones are really good to use in the rental accounts. We got six Tarsas, so that's pretty good. We're actually looking, wow, I got three golden Thaddeuses. That's pretty awesome. Um, you know, obviously if I'm trying to get these to level three, I, I'm trying to get bigger numbers than that. Wow, the gold cards are coming here uh, pretty early here. We got some deep lurkers, some, some golems. There's the regular guardians. We got our first, uh, uh, nine Pelicor Arbalist, so that's not bad. We got a gold Scalvo Healing. So we'll try to click through these a little faster. 14 Thaddeus. See, that's a lot better pull than Tarsas. We got three uh, Infernies. We got 14 Firebolts. We got, let's see, six Soul Stranglers, 32 Hill Giants. That's nice. We got the Goblin Towers there. Lava Spiders, oh, only two Tusk the Wides. First legendary of the night is three Carnage Titans. That's an interesting pull on the Dragon team. The one thing about it is that we do have to get the accounts of Dragon Summoner to be able to use the Dragons, but it's not a very bad idea to try to pull that off. Let's see, oh, we got our second legendary flip and it's a Uriel the Purifier. Four legendary cards so far. Three of them in the Carnage Titan is pretty wild. We got two Golden Time Mages. It's kind of interesting since we got three Carnage Titans uh, in here. We, that could mean a few less other legendary cards. Three Carnage Titans is an interesting pull. Let's see, anything else here? We got the Golden Knifers, a Golden Scout, Golden Archer, a nice little stack of the of the uh, Mycelius Respawns and Infantries. Ooh, five Sloans, so that's not very much Sloans. A Legendary, what do we got here? It's a Void Dragon, and it's regular, so no Gold Foils yet. I do find better luck on gold foil legendaries when I open in 200s in my in my past, but you know, different people, different luck, and uh, I don't know if I'll get one today. Here's here's another chance. Let's see what happens. We got a regular Urza, so that's not bad. We got a Void Dragon. We got a Urza. We got a Gold Tarsa. See, like definitely, I might look into flipping these Gold Summoners because I think that'll help me get the Summoners that I need to try to get myself up to those level threes. Also, I might just look at the marketplace and buy them, knowing that I can sell the Golden cards later. Ooh, we got another Legendary card. If we see a repeat, it does turn gold. But we don't. We see an Ifrit rising. I'm actually starting to appreciate this card a little bit more. Ooh, we got a gold acid shooter. Gold epics are always nice to pull. <laughs> Ooh, another legendary card. And we got a Queen Mycelia. That's really nice because Queen Mycelias are more expensive than I want to play for this one. We got a set five Kelias. 
it's kind of interesting. I think Thaddeus isn't the cheapest summoner, so that was good to pull 14 of him, but it seems like I'm getting around five of the other ones. Let's see here. We got a gold rift wing, some Zenith monks. That's a really strong card for the for the lower level accounts. One prismologist only on the regular there. Let's see here. We got a gold mycelia slip spawn. Ooh, 13 cursed wind windekus. Those are important cards. Let's go ahead and flip through these. We got some blinding reflectors and gargoyles. We got some more acid shooters. Ooh, we got a gold windeku. We got 15. Oh, here we go. Legendary card. It's a desert dragon. So we are getting a good feel of those dragon cards. Those ones are kind of interesting to pull. I have to admit that I'd kind of rather have uh, Quixes or Wraiths. Obviously, legendary summoners are better for these low level decks, but we'll have to see what we pull. Oh, we got one more as we reach the bottom. We did get a Quix the Devious, so that's pretty cool. Oh, right next to him is a river river hellendale so no golden legendary oh unless oh uh, two corpse fiends you know i have to admit i got kind of lucky so far not pulling that many fiends uh not that i want oh we got 11 obsidian so that came in clutch oh another legendary at the end we got two. <laughs> oh my gosh a gold legendary <laughs> check that out now it's a fungus fiend that's probably one of the uh, gold legendaries that's going to be on the lower end of value always because you only need a level one fungus fiend or a level four fungus fiend you don't really need anything in between except for that he does have a little bit of extra power if you happen to need power so he can be rented out for that uh, this one i don't know if i'll look to sell because i don't know if i'll get anything for it we got three gruns at the end three igors and a gold shadow snitch of all cards that was funny i didn't even realize that was going to turn gold i saw the two and i was thinking i pulled two of them the way i did on the corpse fiend so we got we got some luck that's good i actually i don't remember if i own a gold fungus fiend or not i'll have to check that we're going to open another 200 i'll try to go a little bit faster through these but i still think it's kind of fun to, to to have that chance to pull that gfl and and see if you get one now i didn't get a um grandmaster wraith so that was a little bit disappointing and there were a couple of the other legendary cards that i think i would have liked to see that we didn't get but here we go second 200 gives us another chance to do it all again and so we got our first narissa's i don't think we pulled any of those that's not a bad card to have just at level one, even on a new account, because it's a high mana card for when they get stuck in high mana games. And it starts off with three magic damage. So that's a real solid card. That's a lot of chaos agents. You know, I might have overlooked him last time. I don't remember seeing him. Oh, we got our first legendary card and it's two quicks the deviouses. So I got three quickses so far. That is definitely a nice little amount. I think that does mean I could make a level two quicks. We got another Carnage Titan. So that makes four Carnage Titans. Definitely pulling those dragging cards. I'm trying to think if I'm going to keep them low level, what level quicks do I go for? We got a Corpse Fiend. That's not bad. A Gold Forgotten one is a nice card. That one will actually be probably given to one of the accounts to play with because uh, level two epics is about where I'm looking to go for. So any gold epics are worth keeping. We got another Uriel. I don't think Uriel is a bad card to have, but even at low level, if you're playing him in like the level three range where I'm thinking of trying to play these accounts, then uh, you want a level two. So hopefully maybe I'll pull another one. Or, you know, the marketplace for the regular legendaries, it's a little bit cheaper. We're getting a nice amount of kind of gold common cards given out there. Supply runners are strong cards. We got six grunts. We got seven dampiers. We only got one temporal master, but that's actually not a bad thing. <laughs> you don't, you know, I, the temporal master, I think, is one of the one... Um, recharge monsters that i just i haven't learned to do very well with we got two magi magis of chaoses six regal parringtons a gold goblin tower that one's kind of an interesting one too we got a slip spawn let's see what else we got some regular golden towers been a little while since we've seen it shake all right wave brood is a nice card that's for sure we got a gold parrington four prismologists that's nice those summoners have have we flipped over a summoner yet and i just missed it well quicks we got the two quicks 
No other summoners yet. Eee. <laughs> 20, we got a good amount of psychics, so that's good. It looks like I'll be able to get the two psychics to a pretty good level. Nice stack of Chaos Knights there. There we go. Got seven Thaddeuses right into our next legendary. Two Mycelias, so that's pretty nice. When you see that two, you almost know that they're not going to be golden because two goldens in one flip would be pretty wild. Another gold Mycelia slip slon. I got one of those on the other set too. So that makes us, we're at two... Uh, four, five, six legendaries already. So there should be a few more by the averages, but we'll have to see what we get. Nice. Oh, only four Tarsas. Oh, right under the Mycelia is another Uriel, and that means he's gold. And that's an interesting one because we might want to just keep that one and play it because this is the main reason why I said you might want a level two if you're going to play this. It's because that's when he gets his self heal. And this recharge is not good if you have if you don't have your self heal. Oh, and then we get a, a, a golden grud right next to him. Uh, how about another uh, cool gold card underneath? Oh, that's a general Sloan. Thirteen. That's a, not a bad pull. It's not a bad pull. Twelve obsidians. I think I got eleven obsidians and then twelve. So that's really good there. We got another gold card here. First torrent fiend. It's not bad because I think you do want. Um, since these accounts are going to be playing in modern, uh, these these uh, single uh, zero cost cards become the chickens of modern, right? And so, the, so while the bots aren't as good at using them, it's not a bad card for them to have because they theoretically copy the lineups. Ooh, we got a gold card. It's interesting because when you've already got one gold foil, you're like, can I get more before this flipping ends? Um, and I got two on the night, so that's pretty good. We got two Chaos Dragons, so that's really nice. That's a great card to pull two of, because again, I would only need to give one of these to each one of the accounts probably, because this doesn't really have to be leveled up, and then eventually have them work their way into earning those extra cards to level them up. We did pull two Lair of the Darks, don't want to ignore that, didn't have any of those. We got a Gold Obsidian, so that's nice. Again, the gold summoners will probably be tried to be flipped and then pick up additional summoners at this point because I've already got a set of gold summoners set aside, uh, at least level two ones. Another single gold Scalvo, so that's the, that's kind of an interesting card. Ooh, it's another legendary Grum. That's my first Grum of these openings. I don't think he's as important as some of the other cards, but we'll see. Oh, we got another one here. Come on, Wraith. Oh, Ira. Iza, I mean. Iza is probably the worst legendary of the set for most people. Leveled up, she can be kind of effective in the Little League lineups as kind of giving you a different feel and having some archers, but definitely people don't seem to like that card. A Gold River Nymph is a nice card because you want that uh, cleanse ability. Helps with those poison matchups. There, we got a nice amount of Forgotten Ones. Ooh, we got another legendary card here, and it's going to be four Scorch Fiends. That's interesting. That is that is a lot more than I need on the Scorch Fiends. Don't think the resale value on those uh, zero costs are very good right now, though. We're reaching the end here. Got five Infernies. We got some Kulu Swim Hunters. We got some Stitch Leeches. We got a Scavo. Two Tesla Wides. Nine Life Sappers. And we'll end with four ten... Uh, four strikers <laughs> i don't know if i said his name the right way so yeah you know i have to admit looking at this i do see now that 400 packs is probably not going to get me quite where i wanted when it comes to um two accounts pretty decked out with with level three summoners and cards now i'm not going to open anything else because i don't have any more potions and you don't open cards without packs without potions do you some people might, but we'll take a look at that Chaos Legion connection, and we'll just take a quick look at um, Tarsa. So on her stats, to get her to level 3 where I want, I need 14, and I only pulled 11, so definitely short on the Tarsas, but... If we look at, we'll just do this by summoners. The gold Tarsa is worth $14. And a regular Tarsa is only a buck sixty-five. So I can get about seven more. So, you know, that 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 that'll almost pay. We got eighteen uh 
Kelias. So that, well, wait, I have to take away those two. So we got 17. So I can get at least one of one level three there. So I do I do need to get some more. Got a nice pull on the obsidian, 25. And uh, if we go here, so that's 24. We need 26. We only need two more. So that means if I flip the gold obsidian, I can use some of that extra cash to help pick up some more Kilias and Tarsas. And we pulled 20 Sloans and 23 minus two each. So those ones are, need a little bit love too. But we got the three Golden Thaddeus Broods. So we can sell those off and hopefully that'll let me get my level three summoners across the board for both of them. Now I pulled three Quick the Deviouses, which is enough for a level two. Now the thing I kind of want to look at is I plan to play these in modern silver. So let's go ahead and click on the leagues, go to silver. So legendaries can be level two. So I could go for a quick the devious level two, but that's only worth leveling up if I decide to give one of the accounts level two dragons. If I'm not going to give them level two dragons, then there's no reason to give them a level two quicks. And I would just go ahead and give them a level one quicks. Then we're going to be looking to give level three epics. But honestly, level two epics will cut the bill, I think, on these accounts. And then we'll, we'll be pushing for level three rares and level four commons. The reasoning why is at least right now in the game, you can play up in silver one and run into lots of people playing level two cards. Uh, and it, it's it's not something that it's something that I've noticed playing the gold Steve account And so that's the area where I'm kind of aiming to be is with level three summoners And then the highest level cards that those level three summoners can play Which is going to be level one legendaries level two epics and level four commons Then I'll be able to kind of show you guys how those accounts are performing in modern and how well they're earning This will be another kind of experiment that you can watch and follow along with me now I'm not going to have you guys hang out with me while I go ahead and get into um, You know combining the cards and stuff But we're going to give you guys just a quick breakdown of the look at the difference right now That's going on with the modern and wild change So they, they did roll this out and it is working pretty well from what I can see right now Because a lot of the bot farms have not adjusted yet to the modern format If you play in modern you do earn a little bit more money but it, over time that should start to adjust and some of the bot services like Splintermate already go ahead and uh, support wild. So we'll go ahead and get back into, I mean support modern. We'll go ahead and go back into the bot and we'll go ahead and dig into this one and we'll look at the different settings. So once you add an account, you have to just put your posting key in. You, the bot doesn't go live till you enable it. You can set for it to disable at any rating. You can set how often you want it to play. Right now, I put one game every 35 minutes, which would be, you know, uh, maybe 45 minutes would be better. It depends on how often you want it to play. You'll have to kind of learn your settings and what you're comfortable for your ECR to be at. They're, they have a toggle now where you can turn on or off using starter cards. So this is a way to make sure that no matter what, the bot doesn't accidentally play a card that would give you lower ECR because you decided not to include that card in your deck. You can do the, you can have it automatically claim your quest you're automatically um, you can have it set to try to use the best focus quest and so th this means that they will try to use the best deck that they know for the focus that the that the that you currently have this would mean more daily chess if you turn that off though then it'll be just more wins and eventually I think that might be the way to go on a botting service because it, we're going to get to the way eventually once they make the change where you can still get points for your daily focus just by winning And so I'm going to play around with that settings and I'll give you updates on how that goes You can also have it at it automatically advance or if you want But that's only if you want so if you don't if you want to make sure the bot doesn't automatic like sneak its way into gold then you're going to want to have that turned off but then you need to make sure that that you go ahead and log into your account sometimes and go ahead and hit that advance into silver uh, because otherwise it'll just sit there and play in bronze the whole season because even if you're in silver one the next season you're going to start in bronze one and so about two to three days after the season starts if your account hasn't 
enough points, you need to go ahead and go, hey, click over and let me start playing in silver. Now, you can give this bot your active key, but remember, if you give it its act, your active key, it needs to be on a brand new account that doesn't have a lot of Hive. So you want to delegate Hive to that account for its RC. You want to not earn a lot of tokens on that account, and you want to not let this account hold cards for very long. Because once you give them your active key, you are able to have them rent cards for you, but that gives them access to your tokens. They need access to your tokens because to rent cards from you, they need to send DEC. Now, I have this active in renting for me on the bot account that I made that was a brand new account that holds no assets. No problem. Team so far is not doing anything shady. They've been really good to me. They're really honest in their Discord. And them stealing your stuff would have to be like an epic rug attempt by them. But they do tell you don't put anything on these accounts if you want to give them your active key. Now, because my Drazius account and my Robinson account actually have some tokens and blog sometimes, I'm not giving them my active key. They will not be renting for me. I will be renting on my own and I will be providing cards to the account. This is not the most efficient way to run this bot, but it is the way that I'm deciding to set up my accounts. And it's really because going forward, I feel like having accounts with a strong subset of cards that can play any team at any time is going to be the best way to earn. That's because eventually we're going to have focuses that are not faced on team and are are faced on a lot of other things we don't know for sure but at the same time those come out we're going to have the ability to earn points just for winning so i'm going to change these not to try to focus on the quest and just to try to play the best team to win and i'm, I'm going to you know document all of this for you show you how it's working and hopefully if you decide this kind of stuff would be helpful for you or if you decide that maybe you'd want to go ahead and open up some multiple accounts and get them earning it would be something that would be worth looking into now again if you have one massive account then i think you have to be looking at the archmage service so if i go to my battle you can see in wild the archmage service has been battling for me and actually, it looks like it took a little step backwards. I feel like it was about at the L early today, but I'm going to see how fast it can get into Champion 3. We're still at 15 days left in the season. You can see that it earned 10 chests. I earned about 10 chests per day playing. Its ECR is a little bit lower, but it's not the fault of the bot. Uh, the last day of last season, I pushed this all the way down to 20, trying to get into Champion 2 before the season ended. I did do that so I wouldn't get shot back as far, and I only got shot back to Diamond 2. You can see they made it out of Diamond 2 and into Diamond 1, made it halfway towards the Champion 3 now, and we'll see how fast you can do it. You can it, you, And you can kind of sit here and look. Um, right here, it had a little bad streak where it ran into some people that it lost against and right here it lost a few games and right here it won and it won and it won and it won and it's won i've seen it do streaks of about 10 to 15 wins so they do seem to have a pretty good uh, ability to play now i will be turning the bot off occasionally and playing myself in the future but for one season i'm gonna let the bot run because i want to see if the bot can do better than i can do because that's what they said and i can with my cards make it to champion two sometimes make it up to about 50 or 60 in the leaderboard and per season i've been earning at the most about 70 of these uh, champion chests if they crush that and earn something like 100 or two or 150 champion chests and make it into champion one well then i have to look at something like hmm do i let the bot play my account at least most of the time because it it's better than me <laughs> or do i just start using the bot to make sure that i know all of these good teams for different situations there is kind of an interesting de de development here that you can use this as a way to learn how to play the game better and i don't think they would be mad if you did that if you learned how to play the game better from the bot then sold your archmage token to another player so that they could use it for a while and they could try try to learn or just 
spot if that's all they want to do, they'd be absolutely fine with that. I know that the guys would be there. I should be having an interview pretty soon with one of the devs from the Archmage team, so I hope you guys will be looking forward to that. And I'm going to be doing some interviews with some people from a couple other projects. I'm just working on setting up everything so that I'm ready to do the interviews and doing a little bit more research into some things. So thanks for hanging out with me today. It was fun opening those packs. I got some gold foil legendaries. I'm telling you, open 200 at a time with potions if you want one. Now, I know not everyone can do that, but if you're someone who can, do not open them one at a time, in my opinion. <laughs> and that is pack opening advice. I'll go ahead and say that because I seem to get more gold foil legendaries this way. All right. Thanks, everybody. Goodbye.